for 30 years, I've been a casual projectionist with, the, um, with various commercial cinemas in Sydney, and especially here at the Hurstville Civic Theatre. And in earlier times, the standard for re the recording and reproduction of cinema on the screen in all cinemas throughout the world was using 35 millimeter film. And that was the equipment that we had available. Now, of course, it has been completely superseded by the digital format. And 35 millimeter film is now uh, a thing of the past. In the Civic Theatre at Hurstville, we have uh, pro projectors manufactured in England by the rank organisation called Cayley. There were also other brands made in Australia by Cummings and Wilson and also projector made in the Lithgow Small Arms Factory and that was under licence to a company in America. <laughs> This is the Cayley Model 21 projector, made by the Rank Organisation in England, made about 1950. It's incredibly sturdy in construction. The Cayley 21 machine runs at 24 frames per second and produces stereo sound. Safety configurations that have to be considered by all operators when operating 35 millimeter projectors is the enormous light that is generated that could be dangerous to eyesight and you must not look at that light under any circumstances. Also, there is transport of the film happening through the machine. So fingers should be kept right away from all those moving parts. And if anything should go wrong, then immediately stop the machine. Before lacing the film in the gate of the projector, the operator should determine which format has been used by the director of the film. And that is, is easily determined by merely looking at the image on the film. If it's in widescreen, then the aperture plate for widescreen is subtly different to the aperture plate for cinemascope. That, that is the aperture plate for widescreen and as you can see, it's much smaller than the aperture plate for CinemaScope. CinemaScope also is crushed horizontally so that the image has to be uncrushed by the use of an anamorphic lens during final projection work. Now we're going to see how to put the widescreen gate in, in the projector in its correct position. And that's a matter of taking out the guide roller, slipping in the aperture plate in vertical guides, and then putting the, the guide roller back in position. There it is. As the operator determines that the film is in CinemaScope, then you have to do an additional three things. You have to change the aperture plate, you have to change the focal length of the backing lens, and you have to put in the image the anamorphic lens to get the correct proportions on the screen. First of all, removal of the aperture plate and the aperture plate 
is going to be replaced with the cinemascope aperture plate. That's this one in my right hand. So that goes in there. The guide roller back in again. The lens has changed for a longer focal length lens. And when that's in position, the anamorphic has swung into, into operation. So now we're going to learn how to operate the machine right from basic first principles. The first thing to do is to close the circuit breakers on both the projector and the rectifiers. The next step is to turn on the xenon lamp exhaust fan. The next step is to mount the film on the payout spindle on the projector. and lock it in position so that it can't fall off. The film is mounted in the projector with the image upside down and back to front and with the soundtrack closest to the operator. When I say the soundtrack, that is the thicker image adjacent to the picture on the left hand side of this photograph. To get perfect synchronized sound with 35 millimeter film, the sound is 20 frames in front of the picture. So from the picture start frame, which is there where my finger is, we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And that frame is marked sound start. To determine which way the machine will operate, we can turn the machine over by hand to see the mechanism run. Are we going the right direction? That is determined by the pull down sprocket which is here and that pulls the film down from the top spindle to feed it into the gate. To understand lacing of the film in the gate we must understand that the intermittent down below pulls the film through the gate 24 times per second and stops 24 times per second as well to allow the uh, film to be scanned and the image put on the screen. Now at the top of the gate we must have a loop of loose film and the same at the bottom to absorb the intermittent movement that is taking place. The next step in lacing the film into the projector is the film has to be mounted on the pull-down sprocket uh, and that's done like that with the sprocket teeth engaged with the holes in the film. Now we come to a very important part of the lacing of the film in the gate. 
where the film start mark has to be on the aperture in the, in the gate. Uh, you can see this film start mark here, it says picture start. That has to be in line with the aperture hole and mounted on the intermittent sprocket below. Once you're satisfied that the film is in the correct position in the gate and the start, and the start frame is on the aperture hole, then you can gently close the gate on the film, which captures the film on the intermittent and also in the gate. So the next step is to lace the film into the sound head. First of all, round the top roller. Then underneath the lay-on roller, which lays on the kinetic flywheel, and in that position, the marking on the film should be exactly in line with the sound head. And if we take the film out, we can see that that is the case. There's the sound start mark and just quickly seeing it go back in again, there it is in exactly its correct relationship. After the kinetic flywheel, the film is then driven by the sound head sprocket and has to be captured by the lay-on roller like that followed by a further sprocket below where the film is driven again with a lay-on roller on top like that. So the last step is to attach the film to the take-up spool and that's easily done. And so there we are, all ready to project the, the film. Once the machine is laced, then you should turn the machine over by hand to, to check the film path and make sure that the film is transporting through the machine correctly. Now that the film is laced in the projector, we can now strike the arc so that we have light. Once the xenon lamp is struck, then we can start the film transport mechanism and open the dowser to let the light through the film. The projector on the left hand side in the bio box is designated number one machine. The reason for that is all the controls are conveniently placed around this machine. So that to open the curtains, to set the uh, masking and to do all that's necessary to get the show started is adjacent to this number one machine. To achieve a flawless changeover, the operator must stand adjacent to the second machine, ready to watch for the changeover marks, which will appear on the right-hand side of the frame in the top right-hand corner. When he sees the first changeover marks, that means the end of the film is approximately 11 seconds away. So straight away he has to respond by turning on the electric motor in the machine. And once the film is up to speed, he can then open the dowser to allow the light through onto the film. By starting the motor, that will take probably a second and a half of the available time. So uh, 
he still has a sufficient time to observe through the porthole what is happening on the screen and he must watch for the second set of marks in the top right hand corner to know when to push the button for the zipper to open on that machine and the sound to change over. Once he is satisfied that that is completed, he can return to number one machine, close the dowser, switch the motor off, stop the machine, and the machine is then clear to be laced up for the third reel of the show being presented. At the end of that film being presented on the screen in number one machine, it is now set up so that this, the end of the film is out here and the beginning of the film in here. That's 2,000 feet of film and that lasts for about 20 minutes. So to rewind the film, we mount it up on the spindle here and onto the rewind arm into an empty spool and rewinding can start just like that. So that's that roll of film returned back to the beginning. So it means the start of the film is at the outer periphery of the spool and the end of that particular roll is in the centre of the spool. Uh, reminds me that uh, during Dr Zhivago there were 12 rolls of film to be presented, six of them before interval and six after interval. And with in, with inter, uh, after interval, the film began again with an, uh, an overture by the orchestra, followed by blackness on the screen uh, with the, the sound of a steam engine, and eventually the steam engine comes out of the tunnel in the Ural Mountains in Russia, and quite an impressive piece of footage. Maintenance on the Cayley machines is very simple. Have an oil bath contained in the machine with a viewing window here to see that the oil is at correct level and the same in the back of the machine as well. Oil level can be checked not only at the front of the projector but also at the back here and in the event of the oil needing re replenishment then, the, then the, uh, the plug is on the top of the oil gearbox and uh, should be filled until the levels are satisfied. After being satisfied that the oil in the machine is satisfactory, the next thing to check is the cleanliness of the lens. That's, the lens is clamped with a, with a clamp at the, below and can be taken out just by sliding forward. It should be cleaned with a very soft tissue to remove any dust or dirt that has accumulated, both in the front element and the back element. And at the same time, you can see the location pin in the lens uh, and also the flange that positions the lens in the casting uh, in the machine. And so by mounting that back in the machine like that, carefully and clamping up, the lens is in its original position. Once the operator is satisfied that the lens is clean, you, he can then pay attention to the gate mechanism and by opening the gate and taking the part of the gate away, you can then check to see whether there's any build-up on the sliding spring-loaded feet that come in contact with the film and any dirt in there as you can see can be removed simply by wiping and once you're satisfied that that is complete that mechanism can go back in the machine. It merely locates on two pins, one at the top 
and one at the bottom. Now we're looking at the 35mm film splicer together with its shear cutting arrangements and to here we have two pieces of film that have been damaged and need to be joined together. So if we concentrate on one piece for a start and cut it in frame so the frame lines up with the end of the guillotine that's correct. This piece can also be lined up on the frame line in line with the guillotine. In that position the two, two halves are joined together with the soundtrack in line with each other. They're positioned over the pins in the splicer and glued in position with tape. The shear arrangement here is to punch the holes in the, the sprocket holes in the tape and turn it upside down and do it from the opposite side. And that's pretty much basically all there is to it. So at the end of the show, we, kill, we use the dowser to kill the light, switch the machine off, the, the electric motor, switch the xenon off. After we've switched off the xenon lamp, we can then switch off the exhaust fan for the xenon lamp. Then we go down and attend to the circuit breakers. At the end of the feature, to close off the circuit breakers, we first of all concentrate on the right projector, left projector, the right rectifier and the left rectifier in the distribution board. That's all that's necessary to close down the power of the equipment. We've now gone through all the steps necessary to operate 35mm film in a 35mm projector uh, and this will enable anyone that is interested in doing this in the future to be able to pick up the necessary steps to be taken.